Dang it. I'll figure that out later. Okay, no break then. Let's just keep going. That was my break. That was my whole break plan. Back to the witness. I, I gotta tell you, I do not love that every time I press escape, it saves my game and then um, like does this thing where it like exits the game and I have to load it. Like I, I just... I just, mentally, I don't like that. I don't like that model for for what it's doing. Uh, let me just... Oh, damn it. See, I just... Oh, I can... Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't even care. Um, you can just press escape again. Yeah, I just figured that out. Um, what an interesting setup this is. Uh, this feels like a, this feels different, right? This feels like a dragon. This feels like a boss level. Um, we'll see if it actually, uh, um, is like if there's, there's anything to that, but it feels like sort of a, a, a climax for something and maybe something that, that works differently than what I've uh, done before. Okay, so this is a yellow line. Uh, I'm gonna have to go like this and like this and like this and like that. Pretty straightforward. What about over here? Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. God damn it. Alright, um, up and down and around and like a two. Up and down and around, and then what does the two look like? I don't think that's right. And like a two, like that. Okay, this is it. This is the moment where uh, I have started hating this game. Okay, out and down and up and around, and then like a snaky thing. Up and down, no, out, out and down and up and around, and then like a snaky thing. What's the snaky thing? Like, no, it's like this snaky thing. Ugh. Ugh. I mean, I do like that there's two separate parts to this, right? It's going to start fucking with that, isn't it? God damn it. Uh, where um, this is a complicated maze for me to solve, but the fact that then there is a second part does not make the first part more complicated. The first part is what it is. And then the second part is a separate problem of, uh, of sort of... Mem just basically memorizing the line or drawing it or taking a picture. God damn it. I hate, I, I like hate doing this and I hate what it implies about what is going to happen next. Uh, okay. So this is like, this is uh, out and down and sine wave. Uh, but, oh, god damn it. All right, so it's out and up and sine wave. I hate everything. I hate the whole world. Mm. Is that a gun? Did I just, like, create a cannon? Or a camera? What is that? What's happening? What? What is this world? What have I unleashed? Who am I? What am I doing here? 
all of a sudden I mean okay so like I'm I'm angry uh but oh shit what's happening oh it's lasers of course it's lasers of course it's lasers cuz the whole fucking game is light and lines all right um so let's Can we figure out why this drives me so crazy? I mean, it doesn't, it's not that it drives me crazy. It's, oh, look at that. That's interesting that those ropes cross over like that. No, that's meaningless. Never mind. Um, What is it that I hate about this? I mean, let's be clear. I don't hate it from the standpoint of... Um, here's where I hate it. It strongly suggests to me uh, that I am going to to quickly stop having fun with this game. Because it's exploding the play space, right? It, 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 once upon a time, um, the space in which uh, a puzzle was played was a single board, was a known quantity. Uh, and now that is not true. And and it got weird, right? Like, um, it started off, it's just mazes, and then it stopped being mazes. And it, and then it didn't really stop being mazes, but it, it started being mazes that were, like, represented differently. They're, like, conceptually mazes. And, like, then those got weird. And, and it, it became about sort of, like, tracing invisible lines all over the place. Um... Now, we've broken out of that box. Now we have puzzles that are explicitly based on uh, the solutions to other puzzles. Which is fine as far as it goes. Like, that's neat. Um... But we're just getting started. Like, we're going to ramp this up. And so, it's going to stop... This game is going to stop being about... Solving puzzles... Uh, according to... This is where it stops being about... Um, understanding the system of rules at play. And starts being about... What the fuck is going on. And, and it introduces it very, very well, right? Like, it, the same strategy of tutorialization that has been at play everywhere is at play here. Like, this shows me very clearly what is happening, what, uh, what the game is fucking doing. It is, uh, and it's very straightforward. It is, like, the most straightforward example of the thing that is being introduced. But the thing that is being introduced um, is not just increasing the, the play space. Uh, it's, it's introducing an ambiguity about what the play space is. Right? And there's, n there's nothing wrong with this from a game design standpoint. Don't, don't mistake me. This does not make it a bad game. This makes me as a player angry because I know I, I know what's coming. What's coming is here's a puzzle. You don't know what you need to know to solve this puzzle. Not not just like the rules to the puzzle. Uh, you don't yet understand the rules to the puzzle. 
you do not, you are not aware of the things that you will need to understand in order to solve this puzzle. And that is something that holds no appeal to me whatsoever. And this has been a theme. This has been like a really interesting theme recently with seventh guest uh, and some of these puzzle games that we've been playing. And it's, it is also interesting because I am a fan of, uh, of a lot of sort of, um, Oh man, uh, somewhat ambiguous play spaces. I really like escape rooms. I like, uh, at least in sort of limited, uh, exposure. I like alternate reality games. Um, there are a lot of things that are related to this that I do enjoy. Uh, but for me, the sort of idea that like, here's a thing, it is solvable. Um, there is a solution. Uh, uh, but the solution is not only difficult for you to come up with, um, but it actually requires knowledge that, um, you aren't aware that you don't have. I think that's the thing. I think that's the thing. I think this is a game that is that has just become about um, trying to figure out what it is you don't know. Uh, and um, that is... Oh, man. That pisses me off. I'm gonna fucking do this. Look at what I'm doing. We're just gonna keep going. We're gonna all the way. Look at this finite sol number of solutions. Oh my god. I am doing this out of spite. Realize? Uh, not because I think it's a good idea. Not because I think it's the right thing to do. Because I am angry at the game. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. This is what I'm talking about. This is fucking P and NP, right? So I just solved this puzzle. I solved it by brute force, right? I solved it by trying. I enumerated all of the possible lines. And then I tried them one at a time until I found the solution. And then once I had the solution, once I had a solution... It becomes easy to understand why that solution is correct. That's probably not always true, but this goddamn fucking tree and this goddamn fucking apple, like, look, the apple is on the branch, and I trace that branch. I, that's what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to look at the tree and look at the apple, and it's actually like that, that apple is super prominent. I walked up here, I saw a tree, and I saw an apple, uh, and I did not see the relationship between the tree and the puzzle. Um, but I certainly saw that apple. That apple pops. It's well, uh, well colored, well drawn. Um, okay. All right. So this is what the game is now. And this is all right. We're gonna we're gonna have words. We're gonna have words probably in the Q and A. Oh, can I just... I can't. I have no... I want to charge the gate. Can I climb over it? Look at how it's just... It's got footholds. Ugh. Um, uh, this is also the thing that I had braced myself for. I want to follow this if I can. Oh, it is hard to do. Where does that go? Must go out here somewhere, right? There it is. Oh no, that's where it came from. It goes this way. Oh no, that's where it came from. It goes this way to this thing. Oh god, okay. Um, so this is the thing that I had braced myself for. Uh, it's on the left half, on the right half, on the right half, on the left half. 
on the left half, on the right half, on the right half, on the left half. Oh, I have to draw it. Um, this is where Jonathan Blow demonstrates uh, that he is not only an eminently talented designer um, and capable of creating things of enormous beauty, uh, multi-dimensional beauty, just like really stunning objects uh, that inspire wonder. Um, he is also super fucking clever. He's cleverer than anybody. He's cleverer than you, certainly. Like, he's way, way, way more clever than you. Like, like you think maybe you're clever, and, like, maybe he's let you think that you're clever a little bit, but you're not. I mean, not really. Not compared to Jonathan Blow. Uh, and, and now, now is where we're gonna, we're gonna really explore that theme, right? We're gonna explore the theme of just how fucking clever Jonathan Blow is. Oh, God. All right. Uh, I'm going to say... I'm going to say... Look! Look at how many different ways I can view this tree. I mean, I guess it's really just two. But it's certainly two. I can certainly view this tree two different ways. Uh, and one of them is correct. And the other one's not correct. Uh, and if I choose the correct one, then it's going to be really easy to see that that was the correct one. If I choose the wrong one, it's going to be really easy to be like, you fucking idiot, you choose the wrong side of the tree. Uh, and there's no way for me to tell ahead of time which is which. <sighs> Left branch, right branch. Right branch, right branch. That's a cheap trick. I just, I feel like, I feel like that specifically right there was a cheap trick. Um, let's say left, right, right, left. Left, right, right, left. Fuck you. Fuck you, John. That's not fun. That's not fun at all. Like, seriously? I mean, I, I get that that's, you know, that's me. I'm coming at it like somebody else is going to experience that and be like, what? Oh, interesting. A thing uh, has happened. Um, like, uh, let me, uh, let me continue to prod at this mysterious object. Um, there are people who get a kick out of black boxes. I understand that. I appreciate that. That's fine. Good for you. Wonderful. We need people like you. I find it manipulative. I find it, I mean, Jonathan Blow, I am, I am, and I am, like, I, he is an auteur, right? And so, uh, I don't, I honestly don't know, uh, how much of this is him. Uh, the impression that he gives, like, his persona, his, 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 um, his brand is that this game is 100% Jonathan Blow. Uh, in the same way that Braid was 100% Jonathan Blow. And I know that it's not true. Uh, I know that other people worked on those projects and brought a lot to those projects. Um, uh, it is entirely possible that all of this that drives me crazy is him. Um, and it's not him, like, necessarily being antagonistic. Uh, he's created something really, really cool. Uh,
But the thing that he's created is a demonstration. I mean, like, let's actually look at it. I, if I was not playing this game, and that's eventually how I had to approach Blow, uh, Blow, how I had to approach Braid, was let me think about this game as though I did not have to play it um, so that I can appreciate it better. Uh, this game is an awesome in the, you know, most uh, uh, fundamental sense of that word. This is an awesome uh, demonstration of the power of a designer creating an experience for someone to uh, uh, participate in. Right to, to, to come into and explore. I mean, he's he's crafted not just a world. I mean, you know, a lot of the time, a lot of people think about games in terms of creating a world, creating a play space, creating a set of mechanics that allow you to um, uh, to to do things like to, to experience different micro narratives or um, the, the possibilities, uh, emergent possibilities, right? And we've gotten really into this recently with um, all kinds of procedurally generated content. Um, we talked a lot last week about Flint Hook and procedurally generated content is not always my favorite thing, uh, but I loved that game and I loved what it did with it. Basically was, you know, setting out rules for how the world could potentially work the kinds of things that you might find yourself confronted with. Uh, and, um, and then the emergent play of overcoming those unexpected, unexpected because they are, they are literally like unknown. They're not known to anyone, the, the obstacles and challenges that you'll, you'll encounter. And a lot of games that aren't procedural still take this attitude. I'm thinking about like Skyrim. Right, Skyrim is a game that's all about creating this huge play space where there are lots of things that you can do and lots of things that you can encounter, and and releasing the idea that you have any control, that the game has any control over the way that you encounter those things. Uh, it it um it sort of uh, expects that you will encounter them in all sorts of different ways, or at least you have the potential, that potential, and that players will see these things differently in, in different sequence uh, with different context, uh, and therefore it will have different meaning. Um, and it, it embraces that, right? Like it creates this like crazy hodgepodge of, um, of potential interaction out of that. Uh, in a way that is often very cool and often like insanely um, undirected. Like there's shit that happens in Skyrim that's funny because like what the hell was that? Like nobody, literally nobody thought that through because um, maybe it had never happened before. Like there's something cool about that, but there's also something like chaotically, weirdly um, anticlimactic about it. This is a game, this game is the opposite. This game is about fundamentally how a designer can create a space that is so intentional uh, that it controls the way that a player interacts with it even if not literally, I mean, it's not, there's a difference between sort of like railroading somebody between um, forcing them down a single path. This is, this is a game that, you know, opens itself up and there's lots of nonlinear stuff and you can like go around and try different puzzles. Um, but it, at every moment is it, it is about exerting a control um, over the player. And, Again, like I don't want to paint that as a bad thing. 
first of all, that's something that's super hard to do. Um, second of all, uh, it's something that is extremely powerful. Um, and, and third, it's something that, uh, I, I think like has a, an extremely important place in especially interactive media of any kind that has any sort of narrative ambition. Um, but me personally, as a player encountering a game, encountering a, a, an interactive object for which that manipulation is the point. Um, just isn't fun. Like I can appreciate the beauty of it, uh, but I can only appreciate the beauty of it to the extent that I'm not literally angry at the things that the game is making me do. All right, let me see if I can solve this tree puzzle and then we're going to we're going to then we're going to be done with this for tonight at least. Left, right, right, right. Oh no, I already solved this. Okay, all right. I already solved that. I just got to solve it again, I guess. I am making I'm, this is the, also the point where I start making assumptions because uh, the game is at a level of complexity where it is no fun for me uh, uh, to not be making uh, some assumptions. Um, and that is what the game is counting on and what it will exploit. Uh, all right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right. It's just going to be backwards, right, right. Right, left, left, right. Right, so this is, I was just talking about this. I was just talking about he, how each one of these trees has a front and a back, and there's no way to tell, really. I mean, maybe there is a way to tell, um, but there's not an obvious way to tell. So far for me, there has not been a way for me that I could tell what was the front and what was the back. Um, let me, nope, nope, still don't know. So this is the front, just for reference, this is the front of the tree. This tree has like a broken branch. Um, I'm just looking at, you know, obviously the orientation of the sign isn't what's important. Looking at the texture of the tree, I'm looking at the position of the apple, uh, and that is not obviously significant. I'm gonna go back and look at the last tree. Um, but I don't enjoy any of this. Like this kind of detective work is not what I am here for. So this is the front side of the tree. This is the back side of the tree. They look very similar. This also has a broken branch. It's sort of on the right side. No, it's on the left side, sorry. Uh, it's on the left side. Broken branch is on the left side. It's not reflected on. Oh, oh, it is reflected on here. Look at that. Look at that broken branch on here. Okay. Great. So I just did, I think this is, you know, exactly what is the right thing to do. Yeah, look at that. There's a broken branch on there. It's on the left side of the tree. Look at that broken branch on the left side of the tree. Okay. So I learned a thing. So I learned how to do this. Uh... There's multiple broken branches, and two of them are on the left. And one of them is on the right. Okay. Two on the left. Great. Um, there's not an apple, though. Is there? I'm missing... I'm missing the apple. I don't know that this is a categorical difference, right? Like, I find myself exhausted by this sort of puzzle. Um, but, you know, why is this really a different sort of puzzle than the puzzles that we have already seen? 
I mean, that's an axe. Um, you know, the, the, is it, is this categorically different than, uh, than, um, you know, the, the very earliest puzzles, uh, than the stuff that we, we sort of played through that, uh, I enjoyed so much. Um, and if it is categorically different, like, can we define those categories? Can we trace the form? uh that that makes that so different um i don't know that i can i don't i certainly don't know that i can uh without considerable further thought uh and it may be that you know it's it's not a categorical difference it's not a difference in kind it's just a difference in scale um but i have a limit for it I have an amount that I am sort of willing to put up with. Uh, and this, you know, at one point, oh, hey, look, there's an apple. Exceeded that limit. Which makes it harder to, to sort of learn anything from that, even if the things that I would learn are, just, you know, personal things. Um, so I want to like stand on this X and look over here and have, you know, an apple appear. But that, that isn't obvious. I do know that I need to be on this side of the tree. Well, no, I guess that's not true. Like, I could see the apple from the other side. And then understand sort of... I keep thinking I'm going to fall off of this, but I guess I can't fall off. So that's nice. Ah. <sighs> Um, I recently had a student who pitched a game uh, for me, an uh, extremely talented student who I like quite a lot, uh, uh, who has done very, very good work, um, uh, and who I am excited to see succeed. Uh, pitched a game to me on the premise of uh, the joy and actually the pleasure of puzzle boxes. Uh, and I had to ask, you know, what is the pleasure of puzzle boxes? What is the pleasure of a puzzle box? Uh, and so we talked about that for a minute. And the, the, the pleasure of a puzzle box, as we sort of came to understand it, um, is that you don't know how it works, that its workings are hidden from you. Uh, and, um, and yet there are... No, that doesn't match any of the other trees. But what about this tree? Could I be looking at the wrong tree? Um, uh, and yet there is a distinctness to your interaction with it. Um, you are very aware that you're manipulating, right? Like it, it's manipulation is coherent. Um, it's just, uh, unclear what it's doing. Uh, and, um, it is possible Okay, I'm going to finish the story, and then I'm going to take one more whack at this. Uh, it's possible that... It's possible to solve a puzzle box, and if you know the solution, then it's trivial to solve it, right? Um, but even if you don't know the solution, you, you solve it by... Uh, executing these manipulations of it, 
until eventually it just unlocks. Um, and that sounds awful to me. I mean, that just sounds, that sounds terrible. Like I, I see no pleasure in that. Um, but it's a subjective thing, right? Like puzzle boxes have been around for thousands of years in many different cultures. Uh, the same basic idea of a thing whose, uh, whose mechanism is hidden, uh, until it is unlocked, uh, uh, for which the, the, uh, the method of unlocking it is a secret, uh, that can perhaps be known, uh, and can even be communicated, um, but is difficult to uh to to decipher to figure out in fact you can't figure it out you can only sort of attack it brutally like brutishly uh you can attack it naively until you uh until you crack it until like and i i hate to even use the word crack i mean crack as in crack an egg uh crack has a has a a much subtler connotation in the age of uh, of software. Um, it is something that is operated by brute force, and it disguises the fact that it's operated by brute force by um, by being beautiful, by by feeling uh, as though it is. Uh, uh, so far from forceful, right? Um, by, by feeling delicate, uh, and, um, and fine, uh, and the experience of touching it and manipulating it does not feel like something if crude, it feels refined. Um, but all of that is a disguise. All of that is illusion over the fact that what you are doing to it is just prodding it, prodding it, um, unintelligently. Which doesn't, like, let that not suggest that people who enjoy puzzle boxes are unintelligent. Far from it. Um, I'm merely talking about sort of that action uh and and why i don't derive a lot of pleasure from it um so anyway she's making the game uh i am excited about that i'm excited to play it uh and see if um there is a way that i can uh, understand that enjoyment better. Um, that's going to be, you know, my challenge to them is, um, can you not just, uh, rely on this sort of idea of the pleasure of a puzzle box, uh, which you have identified, which certainly exists. Um, but can you actually create something that makes that pleasure more accessible? Uh, I think that's going to be a challenge. I think that's going to be hard. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But that's my puzzle box rant. Like, I've been thinking a lot about puzzle boxes because of that. And I've been seeing a lot of the games that I play in the context of puzzle boxes. See, look at how binary branch this is. But again, there's no apple. I don't know what the goal is. There's also no broken branches. Like, that's another key thing. I know that I need these broken branches and nothing. I stand right here. Like, that doesn't look like anything. Nothing here looks like anything. Okay, you know what that means from a game standpoint? Um, is that uh, I need to stop. I need to give up on this thing that I am doing right now. I mean, this is a, this is really interesting. Um, and again, something that I personally don't really appreciate. Uh, but 
is a, a an aesthetic that I can appreciate. Um, where uh, the game sort of insists um, subtly uh, that you take a break from it. Um, you're not going to succeed uh, by just bashing your head against uh, a thing over and over and over again. Um, you're probably going to need to take a different approach. Uh, and the longer you spend working on a problem, the more entrenched your assumptions become. Uh, and the harder it is to, uh, to see the different approaches that can be taken. Um, to, to look in different places for the things that you think you already know. And so the best thing to do in that case is to walk away from it, to occupy your brain with something else uh, and, um, and come back to it later. And perhaps uh, with that kind of distance, um, you will be more able to, uh, um, to recognize uh, patterns or inconsistencies um, that you uh, were just unable to see um, when you were sort of too deep in it. Um, but what it means for tonight is that I'm going to stop playing this game uh, tonight. And um, let's do a QA. and a I see that there are some questions. I have no doubt. Um, I'm curious. I'm actually really super curious how controversial some of the opinions that I have shared with you are. Um, my guess is that there are people uh, for whom some of this resonates. Um, although not necessarily uh, at the temperature uh, with which I have said all of it tonight. Um, and there are probably some people uh, who think I am just like stark raving mad because uh, what I am describing as uh, as you know as though it were loathsome um, is the the thing that is most magical to you uh, about these kinds of puzzles. Um, I would actually love uh, to have a conversation with someone who is a genuine puzzle box enthusiast because uh, I. I will not claim that I have any uh, background or knowledge or expertise in that subject area. Um, uh, so that would be fun. Um, so yeah, uh, curious what you guys think. Um, please uh, ask questions, put them in the chat uh, and Eve is going to help me collect them. Um, and I'll be back in just a moment. Uh, and we'll, we'll go through some of that, uh, questions. Thanks for bearing with me guys. Uh, we are, uh, not going to be playing the witness again next week. We're going to do something different. We may come back to the witness at some point. Um, and that may be the best way, frankly, to experience the witness, uh, is, is in small doses. Um, but, uh, uh, this was super, super interesting. This was about the experience that I expected. And, and, you know, that may have very, uh, significantly colored my experience. Uh, this is that this is sort of what I, what I expected the game to be. Um, beautiful and elegant, uh, and clever. Uh, and um, and starting out in a place uh, that I find delightful, magical, wonderful, um, and quickly moving into a place that I find insanely frustrating. Um, cool. All right. I'll be back in just a moment.